Hey all, Blake here with another video and today I'm going to show you how to add another super easy live food culture to your fish room arsenal. This one here today is grindle worms and they're going to be a little bit larger so even a lot of your adult fish will enjoy munching down on these guys. So let's not dilly dally any further and let's jump straight into the video. So grindle worms are really easy, hassle free and fairly um, effortless to culture. All we really need to do is feed them regularly and rinse them out occasionally. So um, there's two main ways that people culture them and it basically involves a difference in the medium. So the original way is using core peat or coconut fibre as a base layer for the worms to live within. But I think that's a little bit messy so I'm going to show you the cleaner version in my opinion and that is using these scourer pads so you can pick these up just from your local supermarket but be sure to check the ingredients for um, sort of anti-mold or anti-fungal and microbial uh, chemicals which do actually very commonly come in these scourer pads i checked the ingredients on these guys and it's a hundred percent recycled uh, pet bottles so um, obviously no chemicals in that one other ingredients we're going to need is some sort of food for the worms. You can use um, cheap cat food just like this one or you can also use uh, sinking wafers and bottom uh, wafers but make sure there's some protein content uh, in whatever food that you're going to use. We're also going to need some scissors, heavy duty scissors just to, we've got some cutting to do. I like to use just a little off cut of um, PVC or pipe just as a little handle. I'll show you what that um, means a bit later on. You'll need a pad of uh, filter floss, just something that air is going to be able to ventilate into the culture without letting bugs in. Next up I've just got these cheap uh, containers just from the supermarket as well. We are going to cut this up so don't use your spouse's favourite uh, Tupperware container. Just get something cheap and um, we can keep that in the fish room. We're going to need a starter culture or some worms to get started. Unfortunately, that is usually the case with these live food cultures, but once you do have it, it's easy to set up multiple cultures and you can recoup that money by selling starter cultures to friends and other um, aquarium hobbyists. And then I'd recommend using a hot glue gun and hot glue, but I've, I am out of hot glue at the moment, so I'm just going to use some silicon. Um, we don't really need to stick anything structural together, so um, it's going to be a bit messier to use the silicon, but we're going to get by today because I want to show you this video. So the first step in the process is to get our scourer pads and cut them up just so that we can have a couple of layers, maybe two or three layers built up from the bottom and um, give them a good rinse before you cut them up. But we're just going to layer them in and um, then we'll have a foundation for our worms to be able to live within. Okay, so now you can see I've got the scourer pads all cut up here to form the foundation that our worms are going to live within. The idea with this is just to keep it nice and moist and humid so that the worms don't dry out. You'll notice as well I've left an area in the middle and that's because that's going to be our sort of feeding platform and I'm going to periodically drop a few bits of cat food right there for the worms to be able to eat. Our task next up is to cut open this lid and I'm going to silicon the foam pad across the top. This actually serves two, two purposes so do be careful when cutting your square out of there because we will retain that and it's got a pretty important role to play. So I'm just going to go ahead, cut the hole in this lid now and we're going to silicon in our filter floss across that hole. Okay, so now that you can see the lid is nice and secured, we're just letting that sort of cure and you can start to imagine what's going to happen here with this container. Now we did retain this piece here that I cut out, which I mentioned earlier, and this has an important uh, role to play. See, when we sit this on top, the grindle worms will actually attach and crawl over the surface of this, and that's how we're going to feed them out nice and easily from the medium. So what I like to do is just have a little off cut of PVC to act as a handle so that I can lift up this piece of plastic easily and feed it out. So I'm just going to silicon this on top of the uh, plastic section, just like so, so that we have a nice little handle to feed our worms out using. Okay, so now we've assembled our little uh, plastic feeding dish with a lid. We're going to set that aside to cure as well. And I'm just going to make the uh, base layer, our, our scourer pads, nice and damp here 
and I'm just using some dechlorinated tap water to do so. So now I'm just gonna pour off all this excess. You want it to be damp as I said, but you don't want an excess of water all the way down here. So you basically just want the water to be all retained within the scarab pads. So quickly tip it off there and then that should be plenty just within the pads themselves. So now I'm gonna place the food sauce and we're just gonna use some of this uh, dry cat food here. I'm just gonna place you know, about, about, two, about two of these kibbles just in there. So that's all it is. Make it a little bit damp as well. Um, pour a little bit of water on top just to get it going. And that's pretty much it. Now, it will, it will have a bit of an odor to it when you open it up, but when it's all closed up, you shouldn't really notice it too much. So that's pretty much how it goes. When it's fully assembled, you'll just have the scarab pads, this plastic piece on top, and then um, the lid on top of that, just like so. I'll show you it now with my established culture and I'll also show you how to maintain the culture, clean it out every now and then, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so here you can see my established culture and as I mentioned, all of the worms sort of crawl up to the underside of this feeding thing. So there are a couple of bits of, I think that, what are those? Um, like O-nip tabs, <laughs> I think I've got in there at the moment. And uh, yeah, a bunch of worms going around eating those. So that's pretty much how I maintain the culture. You can see the amount of water at the bottom there. Really not too much, just, just enough to, yeah, just enough to keep all of the um, pads damp. That's pretty much how it is. So to get this second culture started, I'm just gonna scrape some of these worms into the new culture. So I'm just gonna take this little bowl of, of uh, existing worms and just place them in the new culture there. And we'll just close it all up. And now we have two cultures of Grindel worms ready to go just in case one crashes or anything like that. Now, in, if you order a starter culture online, you might receive it in a couple of different ways. If you receive it on its own scarab pad, then I just place that scarab pad yeah, on the top adjacent to the fresh ones that you've just placed in. If they're just worms themselves, you can just place them directly around the food source and that's also fine. So in terms of maintaining the culture, all I do is I just take the top off, just like so, keep that upside down somewhere. I just pour this dechlorinated water again, usually I use tank water, pour it all through there, swish it around a little bit, and then just pour off the excess. It sort of washes a lot of the uneaten food and whatnot out. Um, you might occasionally get some worms in there as well, but there's gonna be enough in the culture for it to keep going rather than have it crash from too much waste and uneaten food accumulating within it. So as you can see, they've all sort of shrunk into the sponge medium now, but that's not anything to be alarmed about. And within, within no time, they'll be bouncing back, back um, eating that food once again. Place our plastic piece just back on top like so, and our culture is ready to go for another month or so. So you can see the wastewater coming off of that. Um, it's also got quite the odor to it. It's probably good on house plants and all that sort of stuff, but it'll just be down the sink for me. Basically, I just put in two or three bits of cat food a day, but just put in enough food that you notice is gone within 24 hours. So if you notice all the food's gone, then increase. If you notice there's still food remaining, then decrease and so on. You could also experiment with a lot of different foods. Um, cat food is the most common one, but I use fish food. Um, you can also use cereal and bread and all sorts of good stuff. Vegetables, of course, as well. Another idea might be to gut load them with uh, vitamin powders used uh, on insects and stuff like that. You might find some mealworm gut loading powders and stuff uh, at your local reptile store, and you could probably sprinkle some of that in and make them even more beneficial. So there you go, guys. That's how to culture grindle worms. Really love grindle worms because they're a super easy culture to make. Another different size, a different um, you know, type of food that you can feed, even the most picky of fish. They're really hardy. You can just keep them at room temperature. I just set them by a light source in the fish room. You probably don't even need to do that. 
Maintenance is super easy. I just showed you my monthly maintenance, you know, a couple of minutes ago, and it took, you know, what, five seconds. Just have to remember to do it. Um, it's easy to start up a second culture and spread them around to your friends. And uh, overall, I just really am a strong believer in feeding live foods to your fish. Um, yeah, I see a lot of great benefits to it, so can't go past it. Overall, hopefully you find this video to be helpful. Uh, hopefully it's solved a lot of questions for you and I definitely encourage trying Grindleworms in the near future. If you like this video, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.